Hi, my name is Harish Qureshi, and today I will be talking to you about Oracle Integration Cloud Feature Parallel Action. What is Parallel Action? Um, within an integration, it allows you to process tasks in parallel to improve integration performance and response times. Parallel action, action allows the path of an integration to be split into multiple branches. And when all tasks are completed, these branches are automatically synchronized and merged at the termination point. There are certain things we need to be mindful of, uh, what is supported and not supported, but please refer to the official documentation because we release new features uh, on a bi-monthly basis. So some of the things that you see here, maybe uh, in the future release, they are also supported. So I always recommend that you please refer to documentation for the latest and greatest. So today, uh, in a parallel action, you can have five branches at the same time. The variables that are created in a parallel branch are available in the main path, so it can help you with your uh, calculations and uh, permutations. There is no limit on how many number of parallel actions can be in an integration. Synchronous and asynchronous integrations are uh, supported. This action is available in both app-driven and scheduled integrations. Actions like mapping, scope, switch, logger, JavaScript, notification emails, and invoke actions are all supported within a parallel branch. You can add parallel actions inside a scope switch, as well as a branch of a pick action. What is not supported today uh, is you cannot add a parallel action inside another parallel action. Synchronization of global variables is not supported. And, and, and that makes sense because you know the branches are running in parallel. So uh, uh, that synchronization of global variables is not supported. Branch specific timeouts are not supported. So when you are uh, creating an integration with parallel action, you need to be mindful of the timeouts. Uh, no independent branch specific fault handling. So what you need to do is you need to use the global fault handler for anything linked with fault handling. And nesting of parallel actions inside for an, uh, each action or while action, stage file action with chunking is not supported today. So in today, I will show you a demo and we will create uh, this integration. Uh, that is, we want to create suppliers uh, in two uh, systems in parallel. One is Oracle ERP system and the other is ATP database. This is Oracle Integration Cloud homepage. I will go into design, integrations. And for today's demo, I have created uh, a sample integration, uh, which is create supplier ERP ATP. This is a application uh, style app-driven integration. And so far, what I have done is I've created a trigger and let me show you what this trigger looks like. This is basically a REST integration. So if I add it, basic information, I have basic, uh, an endpoint resource URI, I, I name it supplier. Since I want to create suppliers, I'm using the operation post. And I have configured a request payload as well as a response payload. In the request payload, I provided a sample JSON as part of inline uh, and uh, inserting some uh, values like supplier, tax organization type, business relationship, taxpayer country, taxpayer ID. And in response, I have another JSON sample, which is mainly returning a status, which is success or failure. Okay, now let's go into actions. In actions within the logic set of uh, actions, we have the parallel action. So we will bring the parallel action after our trigger. By default, it uh, has two branches. If I want to add more branches, I can click over here and I can add another branch. Today, since I want to use two branches, one is to create the supplier in ERP cloud and the other is to create the supplier in ATP. So let's start with the ERP club. I go into invokes. I've configured, uh, I have many different configured uh, connections. So I pick up my ERP connection. I bring it, drop it in front of branch one. I call it create ERP supplier. That's just the name of my endpoint. There are different actions supported in ERP adapter. For this, I'm using the query create update 
option. I go next within operations. I have business objects, services, and business resources. For this purpose, I need to find the service for supply. So let's search for supply. And I have a supply service available. Okay. Now the supply service has got two operations. Uh, it allows to create a supplier or update a supplier. For my use case, I will choose create supplier. Look at the summary and that's it. Done. Okay. Now this invoke has been set up. I get a mapper. Now I need to map the data which is coming from the trigger onto the uh, ERP cloud. So let's do that mapping. Click on edit. Here you can see for the supplier row, there are all these business object of supplier are available. On the request side, I can see those fields that I'm getting as part of the trigger. So I will perform the mapping one by one. Supplier goes to supplier, tax organization type. You can see it's a very simple drag and drop operation. Once I'm done, I can validate. This is all successfully validated and done. My first branch of creating the supplier into ERP cloud is done. Now I want to work on the second branch. So I again, go back to invoke. I have the ATP database connection. So I bring it in front of branch two. What I want to call it, let's call it create ATP supply. Uh, there are different operations supported as part of the ATP adapter. I can invoke a stored procedure, run a SQL statement, or perform an operation on a table. In this case, I will perform an operation on a table and the operation is insert. Next, schema. So I need to find my schema name. My schema name is HQ user and table is supply so i'll search for that okay i don't get it like that so i'll just search all tables i can see i received all the tables here and here's the supplier table so I add that into selected next i need to import this table inside uh, Oracle Integration Cloud that brings all the metadata, the column names, uh, primary key, all that information. Okay, so that has been imported. And I can see the summary. I'm performing the operation insert on table supplier. None. Now again, I get a mapper. So I need to map the data coming from the trigger into the create ATP. Uh, supplier, my supplier table. So edit the mapper. These are the columns of my table. This is my request. So again, I will perform mapping. Let's do that. Duns number goes to duns. Yeah. Once the mapping is complete, I validate. It has been validated successfully and that is complete. On the last mapper, I'm passing the value of success. My integration is complete. One last task, I need to set up a business identifier. So I go into business identifier. I'm passing supplier as one of the tracking. So this is the tracking variables. This helps in our monitoring. I click on save. And my integration is complete. So we can run and test it. So I go back. I can now activate this integration. There are different uh, options for uh, tracking. And since this is a development, I'm using debug. I activate. This has now been activated. So let's run this integration. When I click on run, 
Okay. Let's quickly have a look at the endpoint metadata. So you can see we have uh, kind of a documentation. So this is the endpoint URL. I can pass this to my developers who want to call this integration with the Swagger and Open API. It's a post method. This is a sample request, and this is the sample response. Now, if I look into body, okay, so let's make some changes. So I am going to have this as the done number, tall manufacturing. Let's give it a number, 101. And let's change the taxpayer ID as well. Okay. Once we are satisfied with the request, I click on run. I can see the response says success. Let's go and look into activity stream. And I can see the integration was triggered. It went in in parallel. It created uh, the data supplier in ERP as well as the ATP database. Remember, uh, the supplier that we created was uh, Tall Manufacturing 101. Let's go into our ATP database. This is the table, supplier, let's run it. Run this query. And I can see that my 101, Tall Manufacturing 101 has been inserted into the database table. If I go into ERP Cloud, Procurement, Supplier, I can see that Tall Manufacturing 101 has been created as a prospective in ERP Cloud as well. So, in today's quick demo, we basically wanted to, I just wanted to demonstrate to you how easily you can create a parallel action and you can perform uh, tasks like insert, in this case, creating the supplier in two different systems. Uh, at the same time, you can use parallel action for things like where you are querying the data from two different systems. And then at the end main branch, that information would be available that you can use for any uh, uh, permutation, for example. Thank you.